know what this is, don't you? You just... <laughs> don't even have to open this. Come on, tell me what it is. What's in the box? Uh, Stanley knife, let's show you what we got. Today, following on from the tail build, or doing the next level, it's time for something else to complement the build. Come on, let's go. Now isn't it nice when you open a package and you get sweeties? Thanks buddy. That's very cool. Penny will love that. Nice, sweeties. Right, let's have a look. And try and do this tidy. No, we haven't ordered t-shirts. Here we go. Right. You knew. You knew it was an iron tank, didn't you? My word, there we are. Harley Davidson Sportster tank. And it's absolutely beautiful. This is gonna be the hardest one of all to cut up. It truly is. Check that out. Now this was a kind, a very kind donation from a viewer. It's an early model peanut tank from a uh, carburetted Harley. Don't know the exact year, I'm sure you'll correct me. Um, from a standard 83 Sportster. Just a little peanut tank, the one today that they put on the 48. A little tiny tank that lasts 48 miles. And I'm afraid, sadly, as beautiful as that is, as absolutely unmarked as that is, it's getting cut up. Is that a shame? Well, it will live again exactly the same principle as the twin tanks um, when that came it was it was immaculate black with immaculate badges on and not a mark on it and it was pretty hard to put a grinding wheel into that and, and cut it all up and it's going to be just as hard for this one um, even comes with a cap ready to go but like I said this is a sacrificial donor part so it's got to be cut up and I'll show you roughly what we've got in mind for the back end so I'll show you what I'm going to look to do with this to make it live again and justify the sacrifice. Welcome back to the Boys Garage. I'll better clear up. There we go, that's tidied up. Ready for the duck. Okay, so. Just to recap, this extremely generous and kind gift was from a, a viewer, um, a chap called Marcin or Marsan from Ashford and Kent. So thank you again, Marsan. Thank you so much. Um, out of the way. This is the kind of thing that that I love about this YouTube, this project, this whole community, and that is the the sense of generosity, the sense of brotherhood, where people have got a sports to tank um, or, or one of a hundred different things that they generously send us and they just say, do you want it? I can help, you know, for the build and so on and honestly, it still astounds me to this day and I've been doing this five years. We don't ask for this stuff. If people just offer it and we're so glad to receive it. We really are because it really, really helps. So again, thank you, Marcel, and thank you for the sweeties. Penny's going to love you. She's so going to love you. I just want to show you this very closely again. It's an absolutely immaculate A83 tank uh, with just a single uh, petrol tap hole or pet cock if you're in America um, rather than fuel injection. So it's from a carburetted Harley, so an early model. Um, I'm not really a Harley nerd. I've got kind of a broad knowledge of, of many bikes. So that exact year and model, I would guesstimate um, around probably not this matters but I would say it's it's 
It's early, early, early noughties, if you like, right? It's about 2002 or three. One of the last ones probably went through rejection because I recognised that that badge. But anyway, it doesn't matter because sadly I've got to tear that off. But I want to show you very quickly first where it's going to go. Um, I said this. Let me get you moved across so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so this is the general idea. Uh, I know that a lot of you said it will look too big and the whatnot, but you've got to bear with me. You should know that by now. Um, now that's that's not the position this is going to be. Since Wednesday, I've looked at this again, and of course, I watched in the editing, um, which told me a lot about something that I wasn't aware of. And I I bent these frame rails in. I moved them in by about actually probably nearly an inch and a half each side. So they're kind of three inches closer together. And I was still a little bit kind of foxed at the end of the video why these sections here were still fouling when they hadn't done before. And the reason is that when I watched myself when I was editing, uh, and I don't watch myself, I, I never watch myself, but I just wanted to watch that bit. Because as I brought that tail in, what it did was roll these panels under so effectively, this gap here underneath is now narrower than it was. So what I've got to do, not today, another time, is dress those edges in slightly. Just dress them back with the grinder and just take a little bit of them away so that will drop straight on. At the moment, it goes on just fine like that. And the, the section at the back, so it's, it's here roughly the offending bit of extra steel is that's got to come out. But at the back, it's fine. It lifts off with the plane and bang, lifts off okay. So there's just some fine tuning. Now I've got Mr. Dyson on the job with his lathe and he's making me some awesome spacers which are gonna stand this on. So they'll go here and here. I'm gonna make some brackets for the back so they'll go here and here. So there'll be four positions on the top here and those four positions will be lifted up by about 50 to 60 mil. So they're coming up by quite a lot, which means that right, where this sits, I'm just going to rest it on there for now. So just imagine that's the height. The idea of this tank, naturally, with quite a lot of sacrificial steel cut away, this will go on top. Now, those of you, hands up who've seen the Hayabusa, everybody, good. So the Hayabusa tail, if you know your Hayabusa, you can see it already, can't you? The Hayabusa tail is very much where this is going and I love, I had a Hayabusa, I absolutely love it. I kind of miss it in some ways, but I'm kind of happy just to have my license. <laughs> anyway, moving along. The point of the front is, if you look at the Hayabusa tail at the front, it does actually lean forward so that when the riders sat on it, just, just Google a picture of a Hayabusa from the side, you'll see that the tail section, it leans forward. And as the rider's back rolls down, then the tail section comes to meet it and that's that aerodynamic thing. So I kind of want that going on. I mean, this looks ridiculous, just popped on top. It just looks stupid, completely out of proportion. Probably half its height is gonna to have to go and at an angle as well. It's not long enough, so it will get cut that way, lengthened. Um, the front will do the front. This rear section tapered in will come in and just taper in at the top. So there's lots to do, but it all starts with getting the paint off and getting the tunnel, sadly, cut out. This isn't going to be any nicer than it was sticking a grinder to this the other day, but you know, like somebody quite um, profoundly said, it will live again in a whole new way, better than it ever was before. So that's the same with this. While it still looks like that, take a look at it. That is a lovely, immaculate, unmarked, I can't believe some people, thank you Marcel, I can't believe it my friend. Awesome. It feels bad tearing it up, but I've got to get the paint off it so I can see what it looks like. Putting it off, aren't I? Hey, you can see I don't want to do this. But here we go, gritty teeth, let's get stuck in. I don't want to do this. All right, you remember these from the last one where I took the paint off the tank, these paint stripping fleeces. That's the remainder of the last one. Let's we'll start with that, Let's wear it out before we go any further. Um, they should take the paint off. Poor little tank sitting there crying, can you hear it? Right, 
Now, because this is the filthiest job in the world ever, I'm going to have to, I'm actually going to really PPE up. I'm going to get covered in mask and uh, proper respirator, um, proper gargles, keep the crap off and the earmuffs and everything. So while I get Nanook of the North, I will, um, I'll leave you some music. I'll see you in a minute for a grinder. Look at that, that's, hang on, there's the original. There's a new one, that's what they come like. And that's done two Harley petrol tanks. And Harley paint is renowned for being tough, so there you go, they are a worthy investment. I think, I think about three or four pounds each, honestly. But if you've not seen the last video, they're a plastic composite. Uh, somebody gave me chapter and verse on how they're actually created and made. Uh, very interesting. I love watching programs like how do they make that and stuff, um, and I'd love to see one on that. They're pretty cool. But they're a, they're a byproduct. They're a waste product, so that's kind of a recycling thing in some respects. And again, I think that grinding the paint off one of these is a green solution. Certainly a lot greener than chemicals that then get washed down the drain. That little bit of dust that gets washed down the drain is just sediment. As a as a dust, it's inert. It's dry. It's not going to dissolve and become a chemical. 
again it's just dust sediment and it will probably lay in the bottom of the waste trap there until I scoop it all out in a few months as I do often and put it in the bin so it's not obviously not it's, it's by far the greenest solution is what I'm getting at and they last ages and ages and ages and the great thing is being plastic they don't damage the metal um, this is the point with this you look at the finish you get it's got little swirls all over it but they're only literally little blooms in the surface they're not scratches if you use a flat disc then you're putting uh, hard sand against it and it's you see sparks which means you're taking the metal away that's the last thing you want to do all you want to do is take the soft paint off so great stuff use those sanding fleeces to take paint off on metal parts obviously <laughs> so now i've got to cut the bottom out um, these are a uh, a different the, the modern harley sportster tanks they roll under then they're seam welded but this is the old-fashioned tank which has this kind of pressed side-by-side -side seam and a cut edge now because i'm going to cut um you could cut in there all the way around which is okay easy enough if you had a plasma cutter i guess and i don't so i'm going to cut sideways because it's actually a lot easier to just put the disc straight into there and cut along than it is to try and get it up into there and go around the curve when you try and do that acute a curve act that acute a curve with a disc it just ends up making a real mess and it's horrible and you can if you're forcing it against the disc you can break them and then they a like grenade going off so Safety first, I'm going to just cut around the outside, take about 10 minutes off. This is going to probably get cut at least two inches up in a curved way. So I'm just going to cut as much as I can off just to get the, the base out, which means actually cutting over there as well. Same as the last one and over there. So now I've got a lot of noisy, messy, smelly cutting. Is the disc uh, to get through that which is part two of the messiest day in the garage yet.
use an airline from sort of here and just blow everything out. Um, sometimes, some people have said you get this grey sort of fogged up impression on the camera and is the lens steaming up. No, it's not, it is fog in here. This is why I wear a respirator now when I'm doing this. This is what, three and a half, four dirty, filthy hours later. And it really is a dirty job. It's just grin and bear it, didn't it? To get over it. Um, that's that now. Took the neck out. Well, uh, temporarily, I've got, there's a little pressing in there. I can see, you. so can you if I show you. <laughs> you can see from there that this little collet is kind of pressed in. I don't know what that is. It looks like some sort of um, splash in tank sealant that wasn't very well splashed in. Uh, it's rubbery to, to the touch. Perhaps it had a leak at some point, who knows? Perhaps it's factory. But it certainly hadn't been painted. Any road up. That's it done. All the paint off. It's now a donor panel and now feels nice. Uh, I've got to fill that in to whatever extent I end up cutting that height wise. I'm not going to use all of that by any means. In fact, I'll show you what I am going to do so you get an idea. Clean. Right, this will give you a general idea. Um, now, if you imagine, obviously I'm not going to use uh, anywhere near even half the height of this. That will get trimmed off. But the idea, like I said, it just looks ridiculous now so don't judge it don't send me loads of messages saying that looks stupid though you need to get it's more i know it's just offered up this is the principle this is where it's going to go now it's in bare metal you can it kind of picks up the matches now i want the front this slantage at the front i want that slant forward hayabusa style i want that to be a design shape then if you imagine perhaps this half the thickness sort of half the height just that much of it coming back and then cutting off perhaps here that will end up probably about here so it will come up probably to that height and it will blend into the tail about there and just blend in like it's not there so you won't really notice that separately the only time you'll recognize it or any onlooker will recognize it is this front profile they'll they'll recognize maybe they'll recognize that as a sports tank. Um, the top cap there, um, I've seen people put nitrous bottles in there, just stand them in. Uh, the world's your oyster, or just well it over. But there we are, that, that's got a lot to do, really a lot to do with that. That's just a raw panel, but that's the idea. And there will be blendage here. So the idea is that when that's, it's so difficult to give you a, profile of what it's going to look now because it's it's three times as deep as it needs to be. Um, I could, probably could have cut it there now but I, I don't want to do that because I think you leave this full height I can take this height right down the front and then sort of cut so the, the cut will probably be more kind of like that so it will come up and go along and around and that cut is going to be one of many, so it will just be multiple cuts. You cut a little bit and offer it up a little bit more until it sits at the right angle and at the right height, and so on and so forth. Um, who knows? Maybe something completely different, but there we are. That is the fifth tank. <laughs> Not counting the bike's actual petrol tank. This is the fifth fuel tank. Um, one for the nose cone. Two went into the belly pan, two ZX7 tanks went into the belly pan, uh, so that's three, then this one four, and this five, so that's the fifth petrol tank. So many of you keep saying you should call it tank, you know, be more imaginative. There's not, <laughs> there's not a hope in hell I'm going to call it tank. If it gets named, it will be something imaginative that evokes the look of the bike when it's done, and it will look a lot different than it does now. Um, this, very strokeable. Um, very lovely, still very proud of that. And there it is. Uh, one more job to do today, now I'll call it done because I need time to think about that. I need time to contemplate it and make the right decisions on where the cuts are going to be. Because gifts like this from our friend Marsan don't come along every day. So I want to make the best of this and make the most of it to the best effect. And I can't just do that. I'm not going to start hacking it now. There's no, there's nothing in here that's that's comfortable, so I'm going to wait. Right, here's the one more job today.
hour or so. A couple of them. Just nice, neat, square, well prepared brackets. And they're going to go uh, on here. These two tabs on the back, I'm going to use those. Uh, I might trim the front ones off just for the sheer hell of it because I can. Um, that'll get, each one of these will just get bolted in there. And then that produces a flat platform upon which I can bolt the spacers that Mr. Dyson's making for me right now, I hope, uh, I think. Um, and then I can bolt the tail onto the top of that. So that, that's literally just bracketeering as usual. Making decent brackets shouldn't be a task. Uh, it's probably one of the first things that you do. If you're learning anything from this channel, if I'm managing to impart anything to you at all, then it's the order of things. It's the things that perhaps you should, you should be learning. Um, learning TIG welding really, I've been doing this 30 years and I can't, I can't get the hang of it. But it's not important to me. I've got over it, didn't I? Simple as that. And you often can. But making a bracket is a basic. It's bread and butter. If you can't make a decent bracket, you know, buy yourself a couple of feet of angle iron and it will produce a hundred brackets. You know, that's a nice L-shaped bracket which you can you can bolt anything to anything with and it's angle iron it ain't ever going anywhere is it you can file it shape it drill it and if you cut one piece of that off you've got a fantastic little piece of flat stock tab so you can use a longer piece you can make a you know a four inch piece of flat slab just cut it off so a decent set of hacksaw blades you learn how to use your hacksaw you know there is a wrong way and a right way make yourself loads of work and break blades or just lovely sheet cuts that was the first new blade i've put in that for months and they do last all right if you treat them well but making a bracket is a basic it's a staple it's bread and butter it's the kind of stuff that an apprentice in their first year would be given to do by the master and told how to do it and making a decent bracket is contributory to making a decent job anyway the other thing uh, as you saw just trimmed these little extra bits off that ended up curling under from the shaping of the back end and now Straight on, straight on. I mean, the frame underneath it fits exactly to this, so it's always going to donk, donk, donk. And when the front's on, and I'll be able to grab the front and grab the back and lift the whole thing off and put it back on, which is the desired effect. And there we are. Well, I'm not going to. Well, there's no point in putting that on there because it doesn't mean anything. Right, let's wrap it up. Okay, so all you Trekkie fans, that have been Del Boy's Garage Supplemental, if that makes sense. It's, really, this hasn't been a kind of progressive episode. Not all, not all days in the garage can be progressive sections of stuff that have moved along. Sometimes you're just doing some donkey work that's not very nice. It's messy, dusty, dirty, filthy and horrible. And I'm glad I've got past that. It's horrible. It really is. I've still got to have a shower. That grit and dust gets everywhere no matter what precautions you take. So, it just leaves to say some thank yous for this particular one. But just first of all done three things today, three things that I had to get done. One was obviously prepping the tank and getting it ready for use. I can't fabricate and weld on a tank that's covered in paint and all that, so I've got the stuff stripped out of it that I don't need and the paint ripped off it and the neck out, so that's ready to go. That's that first job. The second job was these brackets. They had to be made so I can bolt some brackets on the back. Done the ones on the front already the other day. So that's, that's those done, just got to drill them. And I've got this now, which, as it lift off an honourable. Now that when the front half's on, the whole thing can lift off. That's the purpose of that. So that's done, that's done, that's done. Three jobs clear out of the way. Some thank yous to say, as I said, we've got thank you to Marsan again for the tank. Thank you so much, my friend. I mean, that goes for everybody that's donated stuff to this project. It really does. We've had some amazing generosity from you, astounding me. And it does gladden my sad, cynical old heart that the bike community, the family of bikers out there is what this is about. It's not YouTube, it's not the internet, it's not that kind of thing, it's just, this is bikers, this is the motorcycle community, because I'm really sure this doesn't go on in the car community quite as much as it does here in the bike community. So I don't know, maybe you know different, but here we, there we are. Thank you so much for all of your generosity. Without it, this build wouldn't be what it is. This channel wouldn't be what it is. We're getting contacted by talented professionals now who want to contribute and help. We've got an amazing airbrush artist, our friend Mackie from Cambridge Pinstripe in, who made the Devil's Garage sign. He's going to be doing the airbrush art on this because he's got talent in that field and I haven't. And 
We've even been contacted by somebody who does leather seats, hand tooled leather seats, which is amazing. So we're going to be doing something extremely special with that, and that will be, it may or may not be video because the individual concern is, is, is not local. But there we are, that's the second thing. So honestly, this build, this project is moving along at a pace I never thought possible and at a standard that I never imagined. And that's all down to the community, to what you're giving us. So before this turns into an acceptance speech at the Oscars, I'm going to cut it there and say just to any of you tomorrow entering the competition, it's the third prize draw for the Scotland 365. Thank you again to Scotland for supporting us with that. They chucked us the swag so we can hand it to you, and that's very good of them. And I'm hoping that in the new year we can do some more of these because these competition pre-prize draws are absolutely amazing. They've lit a fire under your interest, and I love that. It really is connecting us one-to-one. -one. So there we are. Good luck to any of you tomorrow who entered. This has been Double Scary Supplemental, or episode 58, call it what you like. I think it's 52 on the videos and day 58, that's getting boring again. Right, here we are, takes you right, so...